up here has played here before. And Mario has played here a couple of times. He also plays in a band called Earthless and Spider Fever and Rocket from the Crypt, Hot Snakes, Black Heart Procession. Uh, one of my favorite bands from San Diego, a band called Battalion of Saints. I'm sure a few of you have heard of them, yes. George and all of those guys. Um, over here to my left, which would be your right, uh, is uh, my friend Stephen McDonald. I've known Stephen since he was 11 years old. <laughs> He came to a black flag rehearsal. He was this tall. He made me look like Lou Ferrigno or the Incredible Hulk or Arnold Schwarzenegger. And um, he used to, uh, we used to uh, rehearse in a place called the church down in Hermosa Beach. He and his brother and Ron Reyes, who replaced me in Black Flag, we're downstairs doing the Red Cross thing. And I, I was upstairs with Greg Ginn and Chuck Dukowski and Robo doing the Black Flag thing. Okay, now that we've got all of that out of the way, my name's Keith. And we're off. <laughs> All right, this is the ED Show number 38. ED Show fanzine number 38. Excuse me, you know who you are. Hi, I'm Eric. Uh, my co hosts aren't here yet. Um, hello to Mike and Carrie, couldn't make it out tonight. Hope you can make it here real soon. Hi, drink a beer. Come on.
There you go. Anyways, uh, we're for our first guest is going to be Bob Surin. Um, he's an author, local, was locally from Tampa, and uh, give you a rundown on Bob. Bob discovered punk rock as a teenager and spent 30 years of his life exploring the aspects of the genre. First as a fan, then as a band member, record label owner, music distributor, store owner, concert, concert promoter, obsessive vinyl collector. In 2012, a lifestyle, a life-changing event caused him to reevaluate his entire life, quitting everything, selling everything, and moving to a remote area of Central America to start over from scratch. He's now back in Austin, Texas, and Bob wants to tell us a little about himself. And his book, it's coming out. So I'm going to get on the phone with Bob. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Skype, I should say. So bear with me as we get ready to call Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Eric. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. I'm, do I'm doing great. It's good to be here. Cool, man. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me all right? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Can you hear me? Great, 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 great. Hey, so I just uh, told our audience about uh, a little about you, your little biography, and uh, what brings you here tonight. Talk about uh, what do you got to talk about? Oh, well, um, so some people know that I'm from Florida. I was moved to Florida in 1979, and in the summer of 1983, I discovered punk rock through a mixtape that somebody loaned me, and uh, my life was different ever, ever since. I became very, very interested in all aspects of punk rock. I started playing in bands. I started writing about music. I started shooting photographs. I started uh, making flyers and writing for fanzines and, of course, collecting records. Uh, that eventually led me to running a, a record label, a record store, a record distribution company, a music merchandising company, a fanzine, a radio show, and I put on over 600 concerts. Oh, wow. Um, I had a lot of balls in the air at one time it kept me really busy and it was exactly what I wanted to do for a really long time It was my passion um, along the way about uh, 12 years into this 30 year journey into punk rock I met a very special person and I became more and more intensely interested in punk rock and unfortunately I gave not enough time to her and too much time to punk rock kind of drove a wedge between us and I'm not saying that punk rock ruined my life but my obsessive um, behavior, my uh, propensity to take something all the way, kind of, kind of ruined the most important relationship I'll ever have. And at some point, she said she didn't want to be with me anymore, and that flipped my life upside down and made me reevaluate everything. And I ended up quitting my band, selling all my musical equipment, selling my entire record collection, selling all my posters, fanzines, books, and videos. And I took that money and I moved to Central America and I thought I would never come back to the United States. I was in Central America for six months trying to find a happy new life and I never found anything good down there. So in December of 2013, I moved to Austin, Texas and life is pretty good so far. I'm trying to do some different stuff with my life. I'm trying not to fall back into a punk rock rut. I'm trying to explore other venues. I'm trying not to uh, just fall back into my comfort zone. I'm trying to explore things like writing and comedy and art. And I just want to be a broader person and not a, um, a punk rock cartoon for the rest of my life. Well, that's good that you're, you're moving on. And uh, it's kind of like a rebirth for you. Uh, what do you, you know... Uh the second part of your life, you know, the new yes, phase. It is. Right. Well, that's cool, uh, man. Yeah. And, you know, I was born in 1969, and I don't think anything important happened to me until the summer of 1983 when I discovered punk rock. And from 1983 until uh, May of 2012, that was the next section of my life. 
and from now on, this is a new part of my life. And punk rock is still real important to me. I'm happy that it happened. I ha I'm happy that I was part of it. I'm happy that it's still going. But I'm going to step back a little bit. I'm going to be a little more of an observer and less of a participant. And I'm going to try to see what else I can do with my life. Punk rock really became a comfort zone. And I want to work outside of my comfort zone. Punk rock, I'm not going to say I did it all, but it's no longer a challenge for me to play music on stage. I would like to challenge myself with things I haven't done before. I've been doing some spoken word dates, which is very exciting. It makes me way more nervous than getting on stage with a microphone and a band. Uh, I've been doing a lot of writing. I've been writing for some magazines. And I have a book coming out in 10 months. Okay, and that's the one I was showing uh, towards the beginning of the show. Is that correct? Yeah, you showed the cover, and um, just today the public came up with another cover. So that's that's an old version of the cover. Well, that's the way it works, right? Cover. But it's still, that's basically it. The yeah, book is called Crate Digger, an obsession with punk records. Oh, cool name. And um, every, there are 70 chapters in the book, wow. and each chapter is the title of a punk rock record, and my memories associated with that punk rock record. Instance, there is a chapter in there about The Clash, but the story isn't really about The Clash. It's about riding around in my car with somebody very special listening to The Clash. There's a chapter in there about, um, there's a chapter in there about going to see the Ramones with my sister in Miami. There's a chapter in there about going to see the Dead Boys. There's a chapter in there about, um, uh, unfortunately, I shoplifted one time, and I felt really bad about it. And there was a, there was a record that I shoplifted, and it was a story about me shoplifting that record. It's it's all the memories. If you're flipping through your record collection, you're hanging out with your buddies in your living room, you're drinking beer and eating pizza and listening to records, and you're flipping through, and you pull out something, you go, oh, i got to tell you about the day I got this record, or my best friend me on to this record. There's a story in there about a guy who turned me on to the Misfits who was murdered at a concert. It's stories like that. There are sad stories, there are happy stories, there are funny stories, there are stories that couldn't have happened to anybody else. It's all the really important events that have happened to me in the last 30 years told through a record collection. That's cool. That's, uh, I've never heard anything like that before, and I hope uh, people uh, check it out. Just you know, That's a good enough reason for me to want to check it out. I don't think anybody's ever written a book like this before. There are memoirs, but I don't think there's anything like this. Well, let's, let's hope we can uh, get some people interested in it. Um, you said it's going to come out at the end of the year, or 10 months, or? It comes out in May 2015, and in about one month, on August 5th, I bought a one-way ticket to Portland, and I fly into Portland, and I meet up with the publisher face-to-face -face for the first time, and I'm going to sit in their office and go through it word by word, and we're going to make it the best book it can be. Good. That's great, man. Um, what, uh, what would you say, if I were to come up to you now, and say, uh, you, you've shut the door on punk rock. I mean, have you shut the door on punk rock? I mean, do you still listen to punk rock? Um, I mean, Not I, as much as I used to. Every now and then I need to hear Gang of Four. Every now and then I need to hear Fix Me. Or I need to hear uh, World Up My Ass. Or I need to hear Lexicon Devil. But I don't listen to punk as much as I used to. And I really wanted it to be in the grave but it's so much a part of me that every once in a while a little pop in my head and I'll need to hear a song. And I'm living in a town that's very punk rock. Yeah. I'm living in Austin, Texas right now. And I was invited to live here by some punk rock people. So I'm hanging out with a lot of punk rockers. And I find myself surrounded by punk rock a little more often than I thought I would be. But it's not repulsive to me. Uh, when somebody invites me to go to a show, I'm going to a show to hang out with my buddies and to meet new people. I'm really not paying as much attention to bands these days as I was. Uh, I really do want a new life, and when I go to a show these days, not that the bands suck or anything, but I want to do something else with my life. And when I go to a show, I'm not really there for the music like I used to be. I used to be right up front every single time. Now I'd rather be standing in the back having a good conversation with somebody I just met. So punk rock is still a very social thing to me. And the people are just the best. You meet the coolest, most creative, funny, sexiest, raddest people in punk rock. And you don't meet those people on a golf course. And you don't meet them at a church group. And you don't meet them in Walmart. You meet, you meet the best people through punk rock. You really do. But I was hoping to 
uh, broaden my social circle a little bit. I've been hanging around with some different kinds of people who have no idea what punk rock is, and that is also refreshing. I had a date with a woman uh, about a week ago who has no idea what punk rock is, so we didn't talk about punk rock for three hours. We talked about everything else in the world, and it was fantastic. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think you, that you that's a good point, though. You know, you don't have to shove punk rock down somebody's throat. I mean, you know, if they want to know about it, they're going to ask about it. You know, I mean, but. You know, it. I I've I've been in similar situations to what you're talking about right now, and I mean it's, you know I'm, I feel more comfortable around punk people that are in punk and stuff because I feel like they're they're more like me, you know. But uh, what you're saying is is uh, you know it you you're ready to turn it next chapter, man, of your life. What are you gonna do with it and be as as constructive with it and and productive in a new way. Like, uh, I think you and I were talking about you got into mixed martial arts and stuff. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was into, I, I did um, I did martial arts from the age of uh, seven until 26. So that overlapped with punk rock somewhat. And then I, I, I stopped it because I was too busy with punk rock. And then at the age of 38, I picked up judo. Oh, nice. I did judo for a little while until I got too many injuries and I had to quit judo. And I'd kind of like to jump back into the martial arts again because I do like getting sweaty and getting bruised up and bloody once in a while because because uh, I'm a macho guy. And you know, it's part it's part of it's part of who we are. Man. We we've uh, but, we we had uh, uh, Eugene Robinson is, on here. Punk punk rock has been such a wonderful thing, but it's been such a narrow, tiny pigeonhole. And I feel like I've been looking at life through a little knot hole like this for years. And I want to see all this shit that's out over here, man. I want to talk to people who have traveled. I want to talk to people who have read things that I haven't read. I want to talk to people who have experiences that I haven't had. Because that's interesting to me. I can sit down and talk to a guy who's been in a band and we have a lot of common experiences. We can tell travel stories and uh, recording studio stories all day long. But I've been doing that for 30 years. I would rather, I had a date with a woman in Tampa who was a ballerina. And she was telling me all about ballet. I know nothing about ballet. And this was a really great conversation. This is what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to broaden myself. I'm trying to see what else is outside of this little knot hole of punk rock. And there's a lot of really, really awesome stuff. There's a lot of super lame stuff too. But that's up to you to check it out. Well, of course. I mean, uh... You've got so many avenues. I just brought up the mixed martial arts because, I mean, uh, that that's that's a good example of what you decided to do, you know, be, further and beyond. I mean, I could I could see myself taking mixed martial arts and incorporating punk rock into the mixed martial arts because, to me, when I listen to punk rock, it makes me more focused. It makes me, uh, in a situation like that, maybe uh, more intense if it were, oh. were to be a fight or something. But, you know... Oh, I did incorporate the martial arts into... Uh, punk rock i used to smack boards over my head and and uh punch Excellent. wood and i used to do flips all over the stage and i used to uh do judo throws on people in the audience i used to do spin kicks and jump kicks and stuff did you ever <laughs> did you ever so, do yeah, anything so it was it was funny yeah but there, there was the flyer that said um failure face featuring uncle bobby the third degree black belt oh, cool. so um yeah, I'm not really doing martial arts now. I got into yoga about two years ago, and I'm not good at it, but I love it. It's good I for you, yoga, though, man. I do yoga almost every day. When I don't do yoga, I don't feel good. Yeah, so, it, well, it may sound like a hippie stuff. thing, but it's really good for you, man. Yeah, people think that guys who do yoga are are wimps or something. People think that only women do yoga. But dudes who do yoga and, and are good at it are awesome. They're strong, and they look great. And if guys need another reason to do yoga almost all the women and yoga classes are beautiful yeah. don't hit them in class because then they won't come to class and they'll feel uncomfortable you should shouldn't do that i've made a couple of women disappear <laughs> from yoga class by come, going up to them after the class and saying hey would you like to have lunch and then they never come back to the yoga class so i don't do that anymore because i i want them to feel comfortable in yoga i don't want them to think that i'm scoping them out no yeah. i am <laughs> i can't because i'm you know dude oh it's only natural man it's only natural right well, yeah, was, yoga, yoga kind of a, a real big part of my life right now, and I find some, uh, it's not only is a great exercise, but I find that it puts me in perfect mood for the rest of the day. Yeah, I, I, I hear that, and I, you know, med meditation, a lot of people like to meditate two times a day, and it seems to make them feel a lot better, you know, uh, they can function better, and, and they get more energy throughout the day, I mean, there's, you know, I just, like you're saying, it's, uh, 
finding new avenues to take your body. Because your, your, this is the next part of your life. I think you and I are around the same age. So, I mean, you know, we have to look for new avenues. And if you want to take your past with you, you know, you know, parts of it and stuff, I think it's a beautiful thing. I mean, you're, you're doing it in a different way. But, you know, everybody should look at how you're doing it and how, what experiences you went through that made you want to do this. I mean, not everybody's been in your shoes. Everybody walks a different path, but it sounds to me like you should, you've got a book that makes people to check it out and say, Hey, you don't have to keep doing this. You can still have punk rock in your life, but you know, I chose to do this. Right. You know, at some point, if something becomes a bad fit, you put it down. When you start to feel ridiculous or you start to look ridiculous at something, it's time to reevaluate. Maybe every once in a while, it's time to say, Maybe this green mohawk isn't working for me anymore. I'm 45 years old, and maybe mm-hmm. it's time. Maybe it's time that I just, um, you know, look like a regular dude. But you know, I don't think that's selling out. I think that's just being realistic. Sometimes I go to punk rock shows, and I think, man, um, you know, these people ide- ideologically were on the same page, but they look like fucktards. And <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, just there's a way to grow old gracefully, and I don't think the green mohawk is it. Yeah, well, to each his own, and if you know, I I, I think uh, if that's the way you want to go out, I'm just saying it's not my bag. No, no, I I I, and and it's a lot. It's not a lot of people's bags. It's not a lot of people's bags, man. It just to each his own, and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I'm I'm happy you you did this, man, because you know there's probably people out there that just you know. They, they think they have to stay in this path. You know what I mean? It's it's right. kind of, you know, you don't have to stay in this path. There's other avenues out there, you know, and that's what you're basically saying, right? Yes, and I tell you what, I tell you, selling all of my stuff, and I sold all of my stuff, the only things I kept, I kept about six pairs of clothing and the laptop computer that I'm speaking to you from now oh, no. and a digital camera. I sold, I sold most of my clothing. I sold all my books, sold my videos, sold my two cars, sold my guitars, sold my thousands and thousands of records. And it was the most liberating experience the day that I walked to the airport with a backpack. Wow. And everything I owned was in that backpack. And I got on an airplane wow. and I thought, I can go anywhere in the world that I want. Everything that I have is in my backpack. And I have a six figure bank account now. Wow. Wow. And I can do anything that I want for a really, for a really long time. And it was nice to. Uh, when I, when my wife and I split up and I had to move out of our house, it took me three van loads to move my record collection. Wow. And I thought, this is a big fucking anchor that's worth lots of money. Yeah. I thought, this, well, these thousands and thousands of records are wonderful records. The music is fantastic. But this is going to be a boat anchor keeping me in this city for the rest of my life. And just getting rid of the physical bulk of the record collection was cathartic and, and it allowed me mobility and it gave me uh, financial liquidity and I'd now I can just make it up as I go along. And I've been to like eight different countries since I've sold my record collection and there's a bunch more I want to check out. And if I want to, uh, do something wild and crazy this weekend. I do something wild and crazy this weekend. And, you know, if things don't work out here in Austin, I can pack my shit in 10 minutes and go anywhere I want. Well, that sounds like you're pretty uh, ready to go. My uh, co-host, Dreb, just showed up. Dreb, you know Bob? Hey, Bob. I, I know Bob. Awesome. I, I remember Bob. Hi, Bob. Hello. How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm here. Yeah, Bob is, uh, I'll try to get you up to speed real quick. Bob's talking about his book. Um, it's going to be released next year in May. Um, I hope to get Bob back on here so we can talk about it some more in the future. And maybe, uh, do you think it's possible in the future? Do you have, is it, is it strictly uh, writings? Do you have any pictures or anything in it? Or There are, at this point, I think there are 30 photographs that I would like to include in the book. I hope too many of them don't get edited out. Right. But it's a seven stories right now, and it's, I think, 30 photographs, and it's 245 pages. I have to go to Portland in August, and it's going to get trimmed down a little bit, but I hope we don't lose too much, because right now I think it's pretty solid. Well, I hope you uh, keep us informed and stuff. I've got a page. Uh, 
or anything for the book, please let us know or tell us about it now so people can – we'll look forward to seeing it come out. Um, I'll, I'll be glad to post anything, updates and stuff as far as the release of it. Awesome. Um, you know, it, it's really cool that we got you on so quick. I mean, I'm sorry I couldn't help you out. Any, I didn't know you were looking to do this, so I would have been glad to have you on in sooner, you know. But uh, Oh, man, I got to tell everybody watching this came together less than 24 hours ago. I was at work, and we played phone tag for about an hour, and finally we got on the phone. And, yeah, this all came together real quickly. But next time, um, next time we'll do something different. Next time I'll come on here and I'll read a chapter or something, or next time we'll have some photographs from the book. I can tell you great stories about hanging out at the Cameo Theater. I can tell you stories about I can tell you the story about Tom Chavo from Black Flag came into my record store. I can tell you about um, about uh, going to a wrestling match with Jello Biafra in San Francisco. Oh. There's all kinds of funny stories. That's awesome, man. That sounds good. I, I can't wait to hear them. Yeah. Okay. I love Jello. <laughs> Jello is, is a funny guy, and I do he get is. Jello. Next time, next time I'm on the air, I'll I'll uh, I'll do a monologue in Jello's voice. <laughs> that's that's your story and you're sticking to it i had his phone number we can call his house and i can leave a message on his answering machine in his own voice oh that'd be awesome that, man that we'll do that next time we'll okay next time. Promise? definitely promise definitely i'm yeah. gonna i'll put that on the file man and we'll definitely do that but uh uh is, is there any uh what's the best way of people get a hold of you bob I'm on Facebook as Bob Surin. I think there's another Bob Surin on Facebook, but I think he's in Malaysia. So I think you guys can figure out which Bob Surin I am. And um, my, I guess Facebook's the best way, but my email is my last name, S-U-R-E-N-T-I-M-E, Time at gmail.com. Or uh, I guess if anybody wants to call me, my phone number is 512-501-97. Five five. I'm not scared to give out my phone number. Oh, wow. I, I like when people call me. Hey, so. maybe you can have some good uh, sample uh, voicemails for us next time we talk. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Hey. Awesome. All right, Bob. I want to thank you again. Uh, check, you know, like our page, like Bob, say hi to Bob on Facebook. Uh, we look forward to having you on here again, Bob. Thanks for doing this and uh, good luck. Thanks for having me on here, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good one, Bob. All right. Congratulations on the book, man. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. All right, we're back. I had Dreb. How are you doing? I'm talking here. to the mic. Talking to the mic. Hi, Mike. How are you, Mike? <laughs> no, wait. Mike ain't here. That's no right. kidding. Fucking rat cafeteria, Mike. Uh, well, hopefully everything uh, works out for them, and they'll be back here real soon. I'm sure they will be. Yeah. So uh, thanks again, Bob Cern, for showing up. Um, I'm going to ha- have to put some music on. Uh, our next guest just contacted me on the phone while we were in the interview. So uh, hopefully we'll have Felix Griffin from DRI and his new band called Bat. So I'll be right back. Uh, enjoy the tunes. And, uh, let's what are those new head, head, headset that you got on there? They look pretty spiffy. I had these on the last eight shows. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry you didn't notice. Well, excuse you me. That's okay. What can I say? It's okay. It's uh, July 1st. Can you believe that already? Yeah, my mom's 80 years old today. Oh, well, happy birthday to Dreb's mom. Yes, 80. Wow, that's a trip. Yes, it is a trip. Uh, I hope I can make it to that and be healthy. I, I want to be around for a little while, me thinks. All right, here we go. We're going to play some... Uh, We're going to play. So, man, I know where to leave. We'll be right back. Down the 
You funky suit. You just look like a monkey. <laughs>
I can't stand to watch myself Or anybody else all time Myself or anybody else, I'm tired.